Okay, so we are finishing up the final part of this equations and in inequalities unit, which is de dealing with dependent and independent variables. So let's kind of go over that. When dealing with this independent dependent variables, you're going to be dealing a lot with proportional relationships. And you're going to have independent variables and dependent variables. The term independent means it does not depend on anything. Its outcome does not rely on anything else. You can plug in anything you want with independent variables. So for example, you're gonna see this uh, equation quite a bit, y equals kx. And k is equal to the constant of proportionality. I cannot spell. Okay, proportionality, there we go. So K is uh, equivalent to the constant of proportionality. So then you have your X and Y. X is the independent, I'm just gonna abbreviate, independent variable and Y is the dependent variable. And I will show you why. If you made a table, and let's say K was three, let's say this said Y equals three X. Well, I can plug in anything I want for X. I can plug in a zero, I can plug in a one, I can plug in a two, I can plug in a three. Y's outcome will depend on what X is. So I can't plug in anything I want for Y, right? If I plug in a nine for Y, that means X has to be three. So it's not independent for Y. X is independent because I can plug in anything I want. It does not rely on what Y is. Y relies on what X is. And you can see here with these proportional relationships, this here goes up by one and this here goes up by three. And that's what's gonna happen uh, for these. They're gonna be constant. When dealing with proportionality, you will be dealing with constant. Something that's constant is something that does not change like $5 per gallon. Right. If I go to the gas station, it's not going to be five dollars for the first gallon and six for the second. It is constant. It is proportional. It is five dollars per gallon. And so when also looking at constant uh, when dealing with proportionality on graphs, you're going to be dealing with straight lines and it should start at zero, zero. Oh, wait, hold on. Oh, sorry, I forgot. This has to match it. Okay, so you can see here, you can make a table. So if you're not familiar with the coordinate plane, this is your y-axis. This is your, sorry, that's your x-axis. This is your y-axis. I'll draw it here. And so x is left and right, y is up and down. So if this is at one for x, you can even make a table. That's at one for x and three for y. This is at two for x and six for y. So it is, if I plugged into this equation a one, I should get a four for y, not a three. So let's see which one matches that. When I plug in a one for x, I should get a four for y. Or if I plugged in a two for x, I should get a five for y. If I plugged in a four for x, I should get a, I should get a seven. So that one doesn't work either. If I plug in a zero, I should get Wait, this one actually might work. If I plugged in a two, I get a five. If I plug in a four, I get a seven. Oh yeah, this one works. So you can see this table matches up with this one. If you were to make your table, you know, X is two, Y is five, X is four, Y is seven, X is six, Y is nine. And so if I add three to all of these, I will get these, which are my Y values. And so that's how you find the graph when dealing with this. All right, let's do this over. It was already started, so let's restart. Which following, uh, which rule describes the relationship between X and Y? Basically, which one's gonna match up with this? So once again, make a table. X is at one, Y is three, X is at four, Y is six, X is at seven, Y is nine. So if I 
add two to these, do I get this? Yes, I do. If I multiply them by three, do I get the y's? No, you don't. So that's the equation for this graph. And you can see it's a straight line. I'm dealing with proportional relationships, it will be a straight line. So this you're just plugging in, pretty simple. When y is 15, right, this is going back to the beginning of this unit, solving one-step equations, which we should know how to do. If I plugged in a 15 for y, 15 equals 3x. Well, how do I solve for x? I divide both sides by 3, and I get x is 5. When I plug in a 10, 10 times 3 is 30. When I plug in a 45, I get x is 15 when I solve my one-step equation. So pretty simple. OK, this is a little trickier. This is setting up equations by reading this here. Jamie is going to run for half an hour at a constant rate, and they want to plan what that rate will be. Write an equation that represents the distance Jamie will run. Well, distance is going to be you know, the rate Um, write an equation that represents the distance Jamie will run in kilometers d at a rate of r kilometers per hour. Okay, so then half an hour times r. If he ran eight, he would be at a distance of four. Let's see, hold on, let me double check this. Okay, so distance equals the half an hour that he's gonna run at a constant rate times the kilometers per hour. So if I plugged in a, an eight, because they said, how far would Jamie run if he ran eight kilometers per hour? So if I plugged in an eight, then distance equals four kilometers. And so this is how you would find distance. You can set up the equation. Takes practice setting up word problems. Make sure you practice those. Same thing here, we wanna set it up. So Jose made this table to show the relationship in age. You can see this goes up by one and this one goes up by one. So J is Jose's age. You can see Jose's age is seven more each time than Mario's. So M plus seven, right? If I did three plus seven, I get 10. Four plus seven, I would get, you know, each time you add seven to Mario's age, you get Jose's age. Myra is five years younger than her sister. So Myra is five years younger than her sister. Her sister is Talat. I don't know how to say that, but you know, if she's five years younger. So whatever the her sister is, minus five. That gets you Myra's age. And that's how you deal with constant proportionality. That's just a brief intro. You're gonna see a lot of this stuff again. And a lot this is a pretty important unit. I always tell my students because you are going to see this stuff again. It's going to get harder in seventh and eighth grade. You'll see it in high school math. Whenever you see algebra, you're gonna see equations, guarantee. You're gonna see graphs. You're gonna see inequalities. You're gonna be dealing with proportional relationships. So this is a very important unit. I recommend spending time going through the unit, making sure you understand everything because math is a topic that builds on itself. And so if you do not have a strong foundation, you're going to struggle when it gets more advanced. I see it all the time. Let me know if you have any questions. Good luck.